Hello, thanks for taking the time to check out our video. My name is Jerry Olewski and I'm a professor of medicine at the University of California School of Medicine. And over the next few minutes, we want to introduce you to some of the main concepts and ideas underlying our paper, which will appear in the current issue of Cell. The focus of our work is on the anti-inflammatory effects of omega-3 fatty acids or fish oils and a GPCR, termed GPR120, which we've identified as the receptor or sensor for this class of fatty acids. The title of our paper is GPR120 is an omega-3 fatty acid receptor mediating potent anti-inflammatory and insulin sensitizing effects. And as you can see by the author list, a number of my colleagues and collaborators have all contributed to this effort. I'd like to introduce you to the two co-first authors of this paper, whose names are Drs. Diane Go and Saswana Talukdar. We're going to let each of them have an opportunity to introduce themselves personally to you. Hi, my name is Diane Ho. I received my PhD degree from Jeonnam National University in Korea. I'm currently working in Dr. Olevsky's lab. Hi, my name is Saswara Talukdar, and I completed my bachelor's and master's from the University of Calcutta in Calcutta, India. I did my PhD at West Virginia University, and currently I'm a fellow in Dr. Olewski's lab. This project started with the general idea that omega-3 fatty acids, or fish oils, are anti-inflammatory. And this has been known, or at least suspected, for many years. And all you have to do is go down to any nutrition store or any health food store or vitamin store and you can pick up a book and there's going to be a chapter on the anti-inflammatory effects of fish oils. We wanted to see if this was actually true and if it was, what were the mechanisms? And to answer these questions, this took us to an exploration of the family of GPCRs called fatty acid sensing GPCRs. And our first experiments were to look at the tissue expression patterns of these, this family of fatty acid sensing GPCRs. And when we did this, one GPCR called GPR120 jumped out at us because of its very unique and restricted ex tissue expression pattern. What we found was that GPR120 was highly expressed in pro-inflammatory macrophages and in mature adipocytes and also in gastrointestinal L cells. There are several different aspects to our study. So while I'm explaining it to you, instead of you looking at me the whole time, we're going to switch to a schematic which explains some of the overall views of our study. This diagram shows that NF-kappa B and JUNK1 comprise the two major intracellular pro-inflammatory pathways in macrophages. TAC1 is a proximal serine kinase which can activate signaling through both of these pathways. TAB1 is a protein which associates with TAC1 and activates it to initiate pro-inflammatory signaling. In our current studies, we have shown that omega-3 fatty acids exert potent anti-inflammatory effects in macrophages by activating a cell surface GPCR termed GPR120. When omega-3 fatty acids stimulate GPR120, it causes the receptor to associate with beta-restin-2. After this complex is formed in the plasma membrane, GPR120 and beta-restin-2 internalize, and after internalization, beta-restin-2 can now associate with TAB1. This association with TAB1 removes TAB1 from TAC1, allowing inhibition of activation of these pro-inflammatory pathways. We then took these in vitro observations to the in vivo situation and generated a colony of GPR120 knockout mice. We treated wild type and GPR120 knockout mice with a high fat diet for about 12 weeks in order to make the mice obese and insulin resistant. At this point we supplemented the high fat diet with omega-3 fatty acids and measured the effects of this omega-3 fatty acid supplementation on inflammation and on insulin sensitivity. What we found was that the omega-3 fatty acid treatment in the wild type mice caused a very nice effect to decrease tissue inflammation, improve insulin sensitivity, and normalize glucose metabolism. 
On the other hand, in the GPR120 knockout mice, the omega-3 fatty acids were completely ineffective. And this demonstrates that both in the in vitro and in vivo situations, the effects of omega-3 fatty acids are dependent on the GPR120 receptor. That's the summary of our study. And we hope that this video has introduced you to the concepts in our paper. And now we encourage you to go actually into the journal and read the entire paper yourselves.